Welcome to the Pop on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is. I am the Pope in question. My name is uh, Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood. Yes, yes, little about the Urban Achievers and proud we are of all of that. Fun fact, that poster right there, the Flintstones on the Rocks, that is not a poster. That is actually the cover of some rando uh, comic book that they made in 1962. 1961? In 1961, that just happens to share the same name as this week's movie, the wildly racist uh, 2001 made-for-TV movie, The Flintstones on the Rocks, which Cartoon Network uh, aired once and never aired again. Good move on their part. It's never been released on VHS or DVD. It's never been re-aired, and uh, it's not available on any streaming services. We're not. I'm not going to get into the specifics about this week's movie yet, The Flintstones on the Rocks, but by the time this podcast is over, I believe that you will all agree with me with this episode's thesis, which is Cartoon Network did 9-11. Okay. They were responsible for it. it. I've got an airtight case. And also, another reason why I have why I have a problem with this week's movie, The Flintstones on the Rocks, is that I am, as everyone knows, a proud Roxican American. Yes. My parents were both Roxican. My dad was from Roxico. And my mom was from a small border town right next to Roxico. But I am a Full-blooded rock skin, and as a rock skin, this is a racist ass movie. The Flintstones on the Rocks. Yes. Wow. They even got that. I remember in the eighties, uh, every other house had one tile that featured a sleepy Mexican in a sombrero sleeping, and they recreated that. In this movie, The Flintstones on the Rocks, I was very upset when I saw The Sleeping Mexican. But we'll get to that. It is episode 453. <laughs> yes, yes, Little about Urban Achievers. Very excited for today's episode. We have a lot uh, to get to. I've got a surprisingly large amount of... Uh, uh, things to talk about with this week's movie, and uh, I put a little video together. Anyway, uh, yes. So I wasn't sure what to do for the monologue this week. Should we talk about current <coughs> events? Should we talk about how the world uh, could end any second, or about how America has quickly become a dangerous third world country? Do I write a witty monologue? about a topic that means a lot to me. Do I come up with a fun game like Pokemon or prescription medication, or do we once again do what is quickly becoming my favorite reoccurring segment, Jeff, a.k.a. the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends, download today. But here's the thing, real talk. I have five kids. I have PTSD, two cases of PTSD. Uh, uh, I have PTSD, and now I have all new extra strength, PTSD with lemon. But you are so close to having collected the whole alphabet. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. I'm collecting PTSD like people collect uh, McDonald's collectible glasses. Yes. Uh, I have insomnia. For the longest time, I always thought insomnia was just, I can't sleep. I have no problem sleeping. Sleeping's not a problem. Staying asleep and waking up uh, is my problem. Because I will wake up four times at night, and then I'll set my alarm for like, okay, 6.30. But my body's like, no, F you. You're at 4.45. Up. Make coffee. You're awake now. And we're going to think <laughs> about the horrible things. Things we've done. So uh, so I have insomnia. I've been on hormone replacement therapy for uh, about for 45 weeks now. 
which means I'm dripping estrogen. I'm tired. I'm moody. I'm hungry all the time. Uh, and I'm slowly but surely embracing my stoner life. I've always kept the weed part of my life kind of hidden, probably because I'm a child of the just say no generation, you yes. know? Nancy Reagan sitting on Mr. T's lap telling kids, don't do drugs. And then going and having sex with Mr. T. You, you know they did. The longest... You know they totally did. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, and also, uh, cartoon all-stars to the rescue. If I start smoking marijuana, suddenly the chipmunks are going to be in front of me talking about how disappointed they are. Yes. And I don't want that to happen. And also, well, that, 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 that Alvin can be a really belittling fuck when he wants to be. So, yeah. you know. Cartoon Alf is going to show up. The, the, I, I light up a joint. Hey, I eat cats, but you're a fucking dumbass, you know? And, yeah. and that's not, that's not going to be good. So, uh, but I have a license to legally consume the stuff. I went a step farther. I have a, 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 a signed paper from a judge saying it's okay. It helps. It helps me with my anxiety. It helps me with my depression. So as the tired, stressed out stoner I am, and to make a long story short, I thought, what would be the easiest opening to do? So we recorded our last episode three weeks ago on April 9th, to be exact, and a lot has happened between then and now in my life. A lot! So uh, F a script. I just want to talk about what has been happening with me. I, I have a lot going on. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but if I could toot my own horn, I'd never leave the house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So, okay, let's talk. The main thing, the big news, the huge thing that happened to me over the past three weeks, I finally settled on a stripper name. Okay. Really excited. I can now finally hit the pole because I have found the perfect, the absolutely perfect name for, for my stripper career. It's also the name of an ancient weapon. Okay. Do you want to know what my stripper name is, Bunny? Uh, Tammy Trebulange? You're close. Trebuchet. Trebuchet. That's my stripper name. Trebuchet. Be sure and look for my OnlyFans account. Trebuchet. Really excited about that. I hadn't. Uh, it's also going to be my burlesque name. I'm only going to do stripper routines to two songs. <laughs> two songs. Um, uh, the, I got a brand new pair of roller skates by Melanie. Yes. And whatever song Big Bird and Merle Haggard sings in the film Sesame Street Presents Follow That Bird. Oh, and all of my stripper routines are going to be Oogie Loves theme. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. I'm going to be acting out exactly uh, uh, the Dread Pirate Roberts dance moves from that movie. He was in that movie. Yes. No, all of my routines I are bet going you, to be... I bet you if you bring it up to him, he'll punch you. I imagine... Yeah, Carrie Elway's and the Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure are just like, uh, you know how I'm going to commit suicide? I'm going to find Harrison Ford and start talking to him about the Star Wars holiday special. Yes. That's how I intend to die. Either that or I'm going to ask Tommy Lee Jones why he overacted in his Batman movie. Those are the two ways that I'm going to yes. kill myself. It's going to be pretty great. Uh of course, if you if you ask Christopher Lloyd about it, he was like, "Of course, I'm in it. I'm a whore. I'm in everything." Right? Everything. Everything. Uh, I had an audition. We yes. haven't done the podcast since I did my audition. No. Wow. I did an audition, so I was at home, and I was <laughs> high because it was the weekend. 
And I go a little bit all out when I when it's the weekend because I'm the primary caregiver during the week. Got to get all of these kids up, get them ready for school. Even some of the adults, they get them ready for work and take care of animals and do all the dishes and the cleaning. And, and I'm the primary caregiver in my family. And and so it, I, I'm really, you've been calling me that lately and I felt so good about it. Every time you say that, it makes me feel so good about myself. Primary caregiver it is the truth. Mm. And make money selling feet pics. Oh, if I did that, you probably would be so good. So, uh, so I'm high and I'm on the computer. And then I see a Facebook post about open auditions to be a performer during the three day Oklahoma City Pride Fest in june and i thought oh yeah being on the big stage in front of like thousands of people i've always wanted to do that but yeah i can't sing yeah although i will be singing a song later in act three i will be doing a musical number be sure and uh, pay attention it's gonna be great okay uh and i'm not really a drag queen so i can't lip sync something i can't do it i'm not a dancer what am I going to do? Stand up on stage and just read books? Hmm. So anyway, I did an audition to be a performer at Pride Fest. And I just said, like, oh, man, I don't know if I should audition for this. Uh, well, I'm high. F it. And I just started uh, applying. And it's like, hurry. I've got to apply for this before I, I stop being high and change my mind. So uh, I auditioned and it was great. It was really weird because here are all of these young people and they're all in their 20s and they're all attractive and they're all super crazy gay and they all have tattoos and they're all awesome. And I'm there watching the auditions and it's just like, okay, I'm going to be the code breaker, kind of like, White president, 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 Obama. Yeah. White president, white president. Like, here's this attractive uh, young gay girl singing a song on her guitar. Oh, here's a gay dance troupe. Oh, here's Miss Gay Oklahoma. Oh, here's a rapper. Oh, here's a dancer. Hi, I'm the 46-year-old Mexican trans mother of five. My wife is here. Yeah, I'm going to read an Eric Carl book. So mm -hmm. I was the I was the code breaker, but I really knocked it out of the park. I was supposed to have a five minute set. I did about nine minutes, and they loved it. And I had everybody interacting and laughing, and it was it was so good. And so, and like I told my therapist this, and my therapist said, "So right now, Maylin, your chances of being on the big stage are about 50 50. And I said, "Bitch." 60-40. I freaking nailed it. <laughs> I nailed that audition. So, um, yeah, everyone keeps asking me, like, oh, did you hear yet? Did you hear yet? But apparently, I, I knocked it out of the park. 100%. And not only did I do great, but also, I'm the only person whose uh, talent was just standing and talking, and it, it was really good. And uh, it, I, so I'm definitely going to stand out. I really do think I'm going to make it on the main stage. Right now, they're still accepting online submissions to be a performer. They just had one day of live auditions, and I took part in that. So uh, the cutoff date for the, for the online audition submissions is uh, May 1st. So I should hear in like a week or two if they decide to put me on the stage. But I think the chances are good that I'm going to make it. There are three good. days of Pride Fest. So um, I think they could shove me in for 20 minutes, you know? I think I got this. I think you got it. I really do think I got it. And then my therapist says that I should contact the other LGBTQ organizations that run pride fest throughout the city and maybe i can start doing some more live story times just find some different groups and organizations that might have me 
the woman who is in charge of the children's uh, church, the summer school at my Episcopalian church wants me to come and do a story time. So that's exciting. So, you know, uh, May Lynn, Miss May Lynn, the storyteller, is making a comeback. And it's very exciting. And I'm really excited about that. What else happened? I went to a minor league baseball game. Okay, what the hell did you do a thing like that for? Did you know we have a minor league baseball game? No. I didn't know until March. No, this past the, March. The Oklahoma City old. something. The, the, Oklahoma, uh, Dodgers. They're, the, they're a seed team. the OKC Dodgers. Yeah. Seed. I didn't know that shit. But now I can say that I went to a minor league baseball game and uh, we didn't stay. It was boring as fuck. The food was terrible. But we got a hat. Well, it I Natasha's like, ticket was free. Yes, the company paid for us. And there was free food. So I had two cheeseburgers, three hot dogs, four cans of three cans of Starry, my new favorite soda, and then we brought four home. And we each got a hat, and the hat alone is worth like they sell it in the gift shop for like twenty five dollars, thirty five. Yeah. So, uh, but I had so much fun because right before we left, I took a huge edible, and like around uh, the second or third inning, I said, "Okay, I'm gonna go get lost in this massive stadium," and I just started one. And I was high as balls, and it was so much fun. It was Marvel. It was Marvel. Marvel Diamond. It was Marvel, Marvel Day. Yeah. So yeah. they had all of these really bad cosplayers throughout the yeah. entire stadium, but it was really weird to be like, I am so high. I am so high. Hi, Spider Gwen. Can I take a picture with you? It was fun. It was fun I'm being really high and just getting lost. Do you know there's nine fucking innings to a baseball game? Yes. Nine. I, I, I It is obsessive. I am sorry. Do you, I, it's fucking ridiculous, right? It's insane. Yeah. I, I they, would they, go they to. Were like, they were like, I was like, why are there so many fucking numbers up there? I had gone It'll to be about over when minor it's league. over. Yeah, right? And I said, fuck you, I'm leaving. It was like, wait, we made it to like fourth, fifth inning. Yeah. Fifth inning? So we made about halfway through. I I had been to a number of minor league baseball games before, so I yeah I was the expert. It, Amber it's with, uh, yeah it like, says a lot Amber. when I'm the sports expert. I've never been. A you know, expert. I've never been a baseball fan. Yeah. They, I they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't. now now once see once. I actually went to Yankee Stadium. Nice. The reaction That's was exactly awesome. the same. Yeah. So 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 you saved Tasha saved herself a trip to Yankee nice. Stadium. Fuck yeah. Nice. Got it. Oh. Sorry. It's okay. I leaned over to Amber in the beginning and I said I haven't seen this many white people in one place since we both went to go see Alanis Morissette. <laughs> it was very white. I am that's the that's the interesting thing about baseball is that I imagine, you know, going going to U Salt Lake City. And now introducing your team from Salt Lake City. First base, John Smith. Second base. John Smith. Third base, Ernesto Rodriguez. Pitcher, John Smith. So, very white. Uh, so there was a shooting that happened next door to my house, and yes. someone died. Uh, Jesus, father we didn't even cover that one. Okay. No, we did cover that one, but Father Tom felt bad for my family so he uh, and the church uh gave my family a $70 AMC gift certificate i took myself and mal and amber and eleanor and maxwell and uh cousin jaden all of them to the movies like a freaking baller yeah. and i got them all like a little kids snack pack and they were eating food and maxwell's eyes were like huge 
huge. She was so excited to go to the movies and watch Mario on the big screen. It, it, one sad thing that happened was that I did not celebrate 420. I'm very upset about this. I didn't get a 420 this year. And I'm very pissed off because there was a freaking tornado. Yes. That destroyed my town. It was an EF2 tornado. There are two main streets in the town. There's uh, Harrison and there's Kickapoo. And Kickapoo was hit basically directly, and it got absolutely wiped out. Uh, there's a puppy. There's the puppy. Oh, yeah, we got a puppy. That's it's very run. sweet. That's the run. That's the that's the uh, Steve of the litter. I think is what people call it. Uh, so, a tornado last not not last Wednesday, but the Wednesday before that. Hit my town directly. It was an EF3. Oh, there were three separate tornadoes. It wasn't just one. There were three separate tornadoes, which is absolutely crazy. So it was a, a party is, pack. Yeah, yeah, it was a party pack. And uh, so I, I didn't get to, to celebrate 420 because the it, so the tornado hit the night of 419 and the power went out. And then the next day was 420, and it, the power was out all day. The power was out on us for about three days. And it, it, one thing that was good about the tornado was that I ate like a freaking king. Because yeah. there was so much free food everywhere. You go to that supermarket, there's someone. I, we went to a bank, and they were just giving out. Hot dogs and chips and cookies and uh, sodas. And then we went home and then we heard that, oh, but uh, this uh, this supermarket, they have someone in the parking lot that's a food truck that's making food. So we went over there and it wasn't really a food truck. It was just this uh, black family that was just making ribs. And so we had ribs and cobbler. Oh, that was so good. And then the next day, Around lunchtime, we hear, hey, this one church is giving out free Panda Express. Okay, nice. So, so we went, so we all, so we rushed to this church. We ate a crap ton of orange chicken and Gatorade. It, a tornado destroyed my town, and we were out of power for three days. But I ate like freaking queen. Nice. Like a queen. It was nice to see the whole town get together and yada, yada, yada. And then I went to go see Ari Aster's new movie, Bo is Afraid. Okay. Well, for, okay, first, first, you got to give me a little more on Mario. Okay, is there any reason for this movie to be making the kind of money it is? You'll find out in our next episode. Okay. It's on the uh, it's on the cough cough. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fun fact: uh, due to uh, a legal error on somebody's part, the entire Mario movie aired on a Brazilian TV station. Really? Yep. So, next, unrelated to that, next week we will be doing a Super Mario movie. I'm really proud of how weird this year has been so far. We've been to some weird places. Skinamarink, flesh-eating mothers. Oh, remember Blood Beat? That was a trip. Yes. Dogs, please. If, if, very unprofessional, okay? Yeah, this podcast... Want a dog? We are consummate professionals. Infinity Pool, remember that? That was weird. Yes. Uh, Brian and Charles. Skinamarink! I still can't. I still can't. With Skinamarink. That exists. But compared to this week's movie? I think th I, I think this has hit the low for the year. I didn't. I freaking hated Skinamarink. I absolutely hated it. Uh... 
But if you had to watch Skinnamarink or Flintstones on the Rocks again, I would pick. I would pick Flintstones. It's got the original jazz music in the background, and in the in when the Flintstones started, it was a lot like the Flintstones on the Rocks. That it was kind of quiet, and it it wasn't like nonstop gags. Eventually, as the show got older, and oh, there's Pebbles and Bam Bam and Mr. Gazoo, the great Gazoo. Like, okay, now I don't give a crap about this, but the Flintstones like perfectly encapsulates like that old vibe. Like, you could tell me this movie was made in 1968, and I'd say, oh, okay. Mm, yeah, no, I, I, I would rather. I would rather look at a door for another 90 minutes at a strange angle, darkly lit, than watch Flintstones on the Rock again. Hey, honey, I don't think Bunny liked the movie. Yeah, couldn't tell. It's a great movie because I always wondered when I was a kid and I was watching the Flintstones cartoons on Saturday mornings, I wondered, gee, I wonder if Fred is a cuck or not. And now I have my answer. Yeah. So that's good. I'm. It, Fred is super racist in this, and it, it pisses me off, but okay. So there was a tornado. I almost died. But then, spoiler alert, I didn't. Positive. No. Yes. That was exciting. This was this is the closest a tornado has ever hit. And then I went to go see in IMAX Ari Aster's new film, Bo is Afraid. This movie is best described uh, by using dialogue from the Kirk Douglas film, The Game. No one can explain what Bo is Afraid is. It's just something you have to see for yourself. It is three hours long. It is wildly uncomfortable. At the end, there's a giant monster, and I wish I could explain it to you, but it would be such, such a spoiler alert. This movie might be horrible, and I might be obsessed with it. I'm going to see it again tomorrow. Okay. So I was going to go see Evil Dead 7 or whatever, but it's like, no, I kind of want to see this weird-ass movie again. So I'm going to see it again. I I can't explain. I understand why so many people hate this film. Ten minute one. But it's, it's so bizarre that I kind of love it. I kind of love it. And so, okay, so that's all that has happened for me. The main one is I have an I have a stripper name finally. My name is Trebuchet. That's my stripper name, and I'm very excited. So I can finally hit the pole, which I know you've been waiting for, buddy. So many times you have asked me to hit the pole, and I haven't. But there's a good chance that by the yeah, next that was, episode of but this... But that was before transitioning. You ruined it now. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. It, Quentin Tarantino wrote the script for From Dust Till Dawn. Uh, what happened in that movie? Oh, yeah. Uh, Selma Hayek fed of tequila... Yes. to Quentin Tarantino's character by spilling it down her leg and onto her foot. Huh. I bet that's just a bizarre coincidence that is in no way tied to the rest of his over. Yeah, no. Yeah. I've been thinking about that a lot lately. I've been thinking about it a lot. I'm a little bit high right now. How and are I, you, Bunny? And of course, of course, he is the only actor in Hollywood who could possibly have done that part. Yeah. Yeah. You know, nobody would have the 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 special talent that 
yeah. Quentin Tarantino has to exactly suck Get on down. Selma Hayek's toes while she pours tequila down her legs and through her mouth. Yeah, uh, that's that's real filmmaking. That's real filmmaking right yeah. there is what that is. Okay, so we are going to take a short break because we do this on Zoom and we have a few minutes left. They have time limits. Now, when we come back, we are going to do our educational segment, Historic Approximations, where we are doing part three of a trilogy. Yes, our first trilogy. Our first trilogy discussing the history of presidents. We're at number 38. Uh, and, and very excited about this we're gonna we're gonna dive a little bit deeper now that we're getting more into the modern era of american presidents how much uh, grover cleveland can you you think they'll ever do another howard the duck movie i don't know yeah oh yeah 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 sooner or later I mean, I'm still shocked that they did another Mario because that's how bad that last one was. Yes. I, 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 am, I am more alarmed at how much money it's making. It's making a crap ton. It's a making Mario a movie. Crap ton. This yeah. may be in the book of Revelations. You're the religious one. Look it up. It's got to um, be in there. Dog, I'm not taking you out right now. I'm in the middle of podcasting, Bernard. Okay, it's very rude of you, dog. Okay, maybe the so maybe the gonna... beast is Bowser. Yeah, yeah. My kids won't stop singing the Peaches song, which is a bit annoying, but that's fine. Uh, it's weird that my children are singing a song constantly. That is sung by the guy who also founded Tenacious D. That's a bit off. Yes. That is a bit weird. Um, but we are going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about presidents. So put your thinking caps on because we will be right back with more of the Pope on film after this. Do, 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 do. Doop doop deep doop skiddly bob boop. Ba doop bop at the chow. And break. 